In this video, I will show you my best tips on how to stop making counting mistakes in cross stitch for good. Hi, my name is Marie and this is the Caterpillar Cross Stitch channel. If you're new here, welcome. This channel is all about cross stitching and tutorials, so remember to hit like and subscribe so that you never miss a new tutorial from us again. Remember to also follow us on Facebook and Instagram for even more stitchy inspiration. This video is all about my best tips to prevent any counting mistakes and to stop that pesky frog from visiting you ever again. At the end of this video, you will know my best five tips on helping you get your counting right and help you have more enjoyable stitching experience. Let's get counting. Tip number one, two point check. When possible, I check two reference points on the pattern to make sure I'm stitching at the right place. Let me show you what I mean. I will check below which corner do I need to start stitching. That is the first corner, the second corner. Then I'll count how many holes do I need to keep in between. That uh, is one free and the second one is the stitch. And then just to make sure I'm doing the right thing, I'll double check on the right hand side to make sure that it matches the pattern too. So from the bottom of the stitched row, there need to be two free holes and the third is the stitch. Okay, let's check on the on my stitching. So that is one corner, second corner, one free hole and the stitch. And just to make sure I'm on the correct spot, the bottom stitched row, there were two free holes and the third one was the stitch. By doing this two point check, I am making absolutely sure that I haven't made mistake anywhere and that I'm starting in the right place. Both of the methods have given me the same hole of Ada fabric, so I am confident my stitching is correct everywhere and I can happily start stitching on the leaf. If I can't check two points as such, I try to check two things. So for example, with this beige row, I will first check that it visually ends on the same stitch as the green row below, just as shown on the pattern here. But also I will double check that um, my green row is correct by counting that the beige row should be six stitches. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six on the pattern. And in here it's one, two, three, four, five, six as stitched. If the beige color wasn't six stitches, but did end at the same point as the green row, I would know I made a mistake in stitching the green row and would have to correct it. This may sound simple, but it very much goes along with the age old saying, measure twice, cut once. This is a very simple but very effective way of preventing time lost frogging, that is unpicking and restitching your work and the few extra seconds spent on doing the two point check will save you a lot of time doing corrections further down the line. If you have made a mistake after all, this will help you discover it very early on. Tip number two, Grid your fabric. Gridding is a very well-known technique that I will touch upon just very briefly. Cross-stitch patterns are organized into 10 by 10 squares of stitches. The patterns usually consist of thinner and thicker lines. It is the thicker lines that highlight the borders of the 10 by 10 squares. It could be very helpful to have the same guidelines on your fabric to help you with counting and the mentioned two-point check. 
I personally, however, don't like losing time gridding the fabric with floss or fishing line. So let me show you a much quicker way. I take a friction pen and mark a small dot in the hole on Ada where the 10 by 10 squares meet. So in this example, I know that one 10 by 10, uh, uh, the thicker lines meet over here by this stitch. So I need to count 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is where I make my friction pen dot. I personally don't do whole lines on the fabric. I'm happy with just the dot that represents where the 10 by 10 thick lines meet on the pattern itself. When I come to stitch the top row of three green stitches, I will be able to check that my friction pen dot is on top of the stitches between the first and the second green stitch. Now, if it matches at a point where I come stitching there, I know that my stitching is absolutely correct. If it doesn't, I know I have made a mistake somewhere around here and I will need to find out what have I done wrong. Friction pen is heat erasable, so I can easily remove it by ironing or even better, just a quick blow of a hairdryer. It's gone in seconds and I can use it only on the tricky parts of the pattern as and when I need it. I don't have to dot and grid the whole fabric ahead of time. Tip number three, mark pattern with a highlighter. Again, this is a very simple tip, but anyone who has taken their stitching traveling and forgot their highlighter will know how difficult it is to work without it, especially on larger patterns. Use the highlighter on stitches you have finished to be able to easily uh, distinguish the ones that have been done and the ones that are yet to do. So in this case, I can highlight this whole area that I have stitched over here. What I would highly recommend is to come up with a system of highlighting and to do it consistently. What I mean is if you first finish a row of stitches and then highlight, um, then do it consistently. If you highlight while counting and then do the stitches, also do that consistently. If you highlight once after you've done the stitches and once before you've done the stitches, it can get confusing and you risk skipping a row by mistake or stitching a row twice. Just one word of caution, be careful when using highlights around your fabric. Make sure you don't slip, that you don't put your highlighter on your fabric because it can get very tricky to remove it. Tip number four, use rulers or pointers on the pattern to always know where you are stitching. I've got this magnetic board of Amazon that allows me to attach the pattern with magnetic strips and I can use the magnetic ruler to keep track of the row that I am stitching on. This is especially helpful for patterns that are more complicated and not so visually clear. For example, black and white full coverage patterns. It saves you time trying to find where you are in the pattern every time you come back to it after finishing your stitches. Once the row is stitched, I can highlight it and move to another row to continue stitching. If you are in a busy environment where keeping focus is a challenge or you have ADHD or any other issues with keeping focus, this is truly a lifesaver. Tip number five, use apps or electronic devices to keep track of your patterns. There are a number of apps like Pattern Keeper for Android, suitable for large full coverage pieces, Markup RxP suitable for smaller projects, or 
cross stitch saga not widely used complicated but amazing for patterns that are compatible with it which would usually be stated in the pattern description on etsy as usual i personally prefer a simple approach though i just use the built-in markup app on ipad so i open the pdf file in the native app i activate the uh, pen highlight or I can also do it with a uh, drawing with a finger if I don't have the pen available and I highlight what I've stitched just uh, as I would do on the paper pattern so I do it for example like that. The biggest advantage of this method for me is that I can zoom in and out of the pattern which is super handy when my eyes are feeling a bit tired and when I need to I can also easily erase the uh, stitches that I have stitched in case I need to frog a little. So those were my simple but effective tips on helping you prevent counting mistakes in your cross stitch projects. I hope you found it helpful and if I have missed any please let me know in the comments below. I would love to know. If you loved the picnic basket and would like to stitch the pattern with me please head over to our website www.caterpillarcrossstitch.com where you can buy it as a kit or a PDF along with many many other beautiful patterns. If you haven't yet signed up to our newsletter, aka VIP Stitch Club, please head over to the description below to do so. You will get a 10% discount on your first order in return and also a PDF with 8 free patterns to try. Remember that you can also join over 15,000 wonderful stitches in our Facebook group and discuss any tips, tricks or questions with them. And that is it from us at Caterpillar Cross Stitch today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.